Check, check, check. Is this working? Yeah, it's working. Hey, everyone. How's it going? It's Claire. We are back here for another live stream on 343's YouTube channel. Thank you all for tuning in. Hope everyone's doing great. Um, this is another episode of Tips and Tricks, which is the Monday show that I host for all things related to Ableton Live and Push today because that's what you see over here. We're going to talk a little bit about Push and melodic programming on Push today, which I'm very excited about. Let me just also adjust my headphones for a tiny second to make sure I'm hearing stuff. Okay, cool. I am hearing stuff. <laughs> Great. Always important to make sure that that is happening. It looks like the live stream is also going. I think yes. Okay, cool. For a second, things were a little bit uh, delayed on my end. So, okay, cool. Let's see who we have in the chat. We got John. Hey, John. How's it going? We got Jonathan as well. Enigmatic Onion. Ayo. How's it going? Andrew. Hi. Samuel. Hi. Uh, 343 Labs. Yeah, Thomas behind the 343 Labs YouTube channel. Maybe Thomas will have a bit more info about our giveaway, which I'll also speak about later. Uh, Mike Synth. Hello. Um, I said hello to... Hi, Max. How's it going? Uh, Andrew. Uh, who... Hello, Daltrick and uh, Maxwell. Hope you had a restful break. Well, to be very real, I did not. But that's okay. We, we keep moving forward, you know? Um, I did not have a restful break over the, the last couple of days. Um, it was Thanksgiving in the U.S. Be very real about it. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't the best Thanksgiving. Um, but we're, we're all doing our best, you know? So we, we keep up with it. Um, oh, Paul! Hi, Paul! How's it going? Nice to see you again. Okay, cool. I see. I think we got uh, Tyra also. Yeah. Hey, nice to see everybody. Great to see you all. Thank you all for being here. Uh, yeah. So today we're going to speak a little bit, bit about push stuff. Uh, but before I do, we have a giveaway again this week. So last week we had a pretty short week for 343 TV. We only did Monday and Tuesday because after that there was the Thanksgiving uh, break or the holiday in the United States at least. 
So we did that. Uh, but this week, we are back again for the full week, I believe. If, if that's wrong, someone please correct me. <laughs> but we should be back again for the full week. And we have a giveaway. We have something this week from our dear friends at Arturia. So Thomas from 343 Labs will be posting that in the chat with more information. So Thomas, uh, yeah, if you can throw that in the chat, that would be amazing. But please enter the giveaway, everyone. We want you to win. We always want you to win stuff. So to that end, if you enter the giveaway and if you enter more, uh, if you tune into the other episodes of 343 TV every day at 1 p.m. Eastern time on our YouTube channel, you'll have more chances of winning. Uh, and I know that we do have a couple of winners who have been regularly tuning in. So for anyone who's won, if you want to tell us about how you've been using the stuff that you've won, <laughs> you can, of course, tell us about that in, um, in the chat and we can chat about that. As well, oh, uh, Animatic Onion just said, I figured out how to control pitch modulation with Ultra Boy using Mini Controller and it's a game changer. Can't wait to use my own vocals to make Hyper Pop. That's awesome. Happy to hear that. Congratulations, um, Enigmatic Onion. Happy to, to hear that you managed to do that. Uh, I think it's always cool to be able to do that with controllers. And as far as like push goes, that's something that you can also do. Um, it's pretty much, you can put push into a mode that's, uh, that's called... Um, user mode, which lets you kind of use it like a generic MIDI controller. And I do that very often too. Uh, but for now, we're just going to put it into its usual live mode. And we're going to build a little bit on what we did last week, which was drum programming on push. So let's do a bit of a recap. Let's listen to what we did last week and how we can build upon that with some melodic stuff today. And by melodic, what I really mean is, um, I, I guess it also does kind of encompass all of the harmonic harmonic and chordal stuff too. Um, I really mean playing pitches on push and how we go about doing, playing a certain note or playing a certain pitch. Before we get to that though, we have our drums, which are the rhythmic parts. So let's jog our memories. Here are the clips we made last week. Cool. Let's also bring the mix down a little bit so that you can hear me a bit better from push. Okay, cool. There we go. So we have one clip to start us off. And then I remember I made a second clip with a substitute kick drum, so that's where we get the low end from. And then we've also got one last one that we had with other stuff. Okay, cool. So we've got all of these different drum clips, pretty nice. I might for now stick to the first one because I think I, I want something pretty basic, but let's take a look at how to get started with melodic and harmonic stuff on push. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a MIDI track over here and you should be able to see, let me just check that everyone's able to see that. Yeah, cool, you can see that. Um, so I'm gonna add a MIDI track. Let's start off with a default empty one. And what I did is I clicked on this button over here on the top right of push that says add track. Uh, if, you, if this is too fast or if you wanna get a little bit more clarity, you can always watch the replay of this or I also have a series on my own YouTube channel that's called A Trick A Day or Push Play. That's a sub-series of that where I do like daily uh, tricks about how to use push, how to use live, different elements related to Ableton products. So you can check that out. And I do a, a whole thing dedicated to how to make a virtual instrument track pop up from Push. So, uh, but again, it's add track. We're gonna go to MIDI track and let's head over to some um, instruments. And I think I wanna start off maybe with just something a little simple. There's an instrument in live that's called electric and it's really great for, um, it's really great for, key sounds I find like keyboards um, and that's because it's kind of modeled a little bit after how an electric piano might work so let's go ahead and just pull up a default electric sound I'm gonna load that up on my MIDI track over here you can also just do this in live you don't have to go through the entire push shenanigan thing but now we can also see in live that I have the electric instrument pulled up so you can take a look at its interface it has a very cool hammer action-y thing going on usually in my head when I think of um, different kinds of key sounds. I think of them as purple. So let's also go ahead and recolor this a little bit. I'm gonna hold down the shift button and touch on the track's name. Let's do the shade of purple. Very cool. And let's also bring the volume up a little bit. Nice. Great. So I just pulled up this instrument now. 
And one of the first things that a lot of people start noticing about Push is that it's lit up in a certain way. Um, so right now, if you are watching on, I'm, I'm going to adjust the brightness just a tad bit, everyone. Right now, if you're, if you're watching with us on, I think that's a little better. Great. If you're watching with us on the 343 Labs YouTube channel, you'll see that I have certain pads on Push lit up. Uh, bright more brightly than other ones and any pad that is oh my goodness there's an ambulance um any pad that is a little bit darker or it's grayed out that's a pad that's not currently in the scale of whatever i have push set to and every pad that's lit up is in this particular scale so what do i have right now well if i play up notes in groups of threes i'm going to be able to get some kind of major scale how do i know that it's a major scale um First of all, I think <laughs> usually when you pull push up and it goes into C major by default, but visually speaking, I've played push so many times that I know that this is a major scale shape. So if I play upwards in groups of threes, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, I'll get some kind of scale shape. So this means that if I start playing upwards in groups of threes over here with these three lit up notes, I'm going to start getting octaves of the C major scale up. So so that's going to give me my C major scale within these three columns. And this is in chromatic note mode on push. So that's why we have all of these different spaces in between. Usually when we mention the chromatic scale, as far as a theoretical side of, of things go, we mean all of the notes in any kind of scale in the Western uh, musical tradition. So that means C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, V, and then back to C. I hope that was all the notes. If I missed something out, let me know. I was trying to like count in my head <laughs> when I did that. Uh, but let's even take a, st a step further back. How do we actually get to this? There's a really useful setting on push that's called scale, and it lets you set the specific kind of scale that you want to be able to use on push. So right now, I've got my scale set to C major. And maybe just even taking a step back for our friends who um, are a bit less familiar maybe with the way a scale works or a key works is usually in, in music, we think about, um, at least in the Western music tradition, and really all, all that I'm speaking about in terms of theory is really for Western music for, for most part in these streams. Uh, we think about a key and that's usually in uh, usually describes some kind of scale, some kind of collection of notes that starts on a specific note letter. So for example, if I'm in the key of C major, I'm going to be playing all of the notes in a major kind of scale in a certain pattern with certain groups of, of notes and certain groups of intervals, but I'm always gonna start on the note C. So that's C. And if I play upwards, that's going to be a major scale. Now, I can have different kinds of arrangements of the notes in a scale, and that's what gives me different types of scales. So if I'm playing a minor scale instead, I can switch that on push. You might see some of the notes shift a little bit. Now, if I play the lit up pads again in groups of threes, though, I'll get a minor scale. So a little bit of a darker color to the major scale. Usually when we think of major scales, we associate it with adjectives like bright, happy, positive, cheerful, things like that. So really um, a little bit more positive. If you think about the song, Mary Had a Little Lamb, that's often one thing that I like to use to think about a major scale and a major, major feeling. So that's Mary Had a Little Lamb. Um, but if you think of Mary being maybe a little sad, maybe she lost a sheep or something. You got like a minor version of Mary had a little lamb, but that's what's going on. So from push, we have the, abil the ability to choose any kind of scale that we want. So for example, if I want to be in um, E minor, I can choose E as my root note. And now instead of starting on C, I'm starting on E. And that's my E minor scale. And I can get a pretty interesting combination of all of these skills. For example, what if I want it to be in um, a, a mode even? So a mode is also a little similar to a scale without getting super nerdy into the theory stuff. That is more for, for Thursdays when we have Theory Thursday with Max, <laughs> who's, who's also here uh, in the chat. Max is our co-founder and he's currently in Berlin. Max hosts the uh, Thursday show. So let's say we want it to be in a mode that's not major or minor. Maybe we want to be in A-flat Phrygian. 
Sure, why not? <laughs> so let's put push into A flat Phrygian, and now the notes that I play upwards are gonna give me an A flat Phrygian scale. So it's a little bit of uh, an even darker sound than your traditional minor scale, without going super in depth into to what a Phrygian mode is. But yeah, you can basically choose and mix and match all of these things. You got Dorian sharp four, which is actually one of my favorite scales to get a little bit crazy with occasionally. So you got that. Um, you got a, lot, a bunch of other different kinds of scales. Uh, at this stage, I don't think that you can use your own custom scales on push yet. Uh, but fingers crossed for, for that. That would be very exciting to be able to do. For now, though, I think let's start off with um, a minor scale. And we'll start off simple. Let's do A minor. A minor is one of the most common minor scales out there. And that's usually because if you look at a piano, uh, and, and if, if you look at all of the black and the white keys, most of the white keys, most, oh, not most of the white keys, all of the white keys, uh, when you play all of the white keys upwards on a piano and you start from the letter A, that's going to give you an A minor scale. Uh, and if you've heard me talk about white notes before, maybe it might remind you of C major. So C major and C minor are kind of related. All of them use, both of them use all of the white notes on uh, any kind of, of piano, except for A minor. If you start on A, you'll get a minor scale. And if you start on C, you'll get a major scale. So we call them relative major and relative minor. But yeah, let's start off with A minor. And maybe we'll make something interesting. So now that I kind of shared a little bit about how push works, you play upwards in threes. The reason why this layout is this way at the moment is because I have push set to what's called fourths mode. So this means that if I played notes vertically upwards, <laughs> that's actually a, a very kind of like a jazzy chordal harmony type of sound, um, you will get a note that's a fourth above. So for example, if I play this note, this is A, this is A minor, this is where we're starting off. If I play the note that's a fourth above A minor, a fourth above A, excuse me, um, that's D. And if I play a note that's a fourth above D, that's G. So I'm getting all of these fourths upwards vertically. Um, the reason why I have push in th this layout, you can actually have it in three different layouts. Uh, fourths, I like fourths a lot because it reminds me a bit of uh, what playing guitar or bass is like. And fun fact, I started playing um, push in this way and then I found that I could play guitar and bass a lot easier. So uh, kind of like the reverse maybe of what a lot of people might, might do if they think about uh, learning instruments. I learned push first and then I learned how to play guitar and bass. All right, learn how, I learned, I, I learned how did, what order did I do things in? I can't even remember now. I think it was push and then I did bass and then I did guitar. Or, or I played a little bit before I was using push, but uh, push helped me to accelerate my learning on those instruments. So very interesting. So we got um, fourths. You can also have the option of laying this out in thirds. So you'll get a third above instead. Um, or you can also do sequential. So that means that everything is just chromatic one after the other, no repeated notes, which some people are able to play. I, I personally prefer fourths just because it's a lot easier to navigate. And if anyone's seen videos on my um, push pedagogy, you would have a greater explanation of why I do this. <laughs> so, um, and I do have something in the works. So please keep a lookout for that. I'm working on some course material and some some book stuff. Um, so if anyone knows of a book publisher, <laughs> let me know. Uh, but in the meantime, let's get back here. So I'm using these notes. Um, I can create melodies. I can also play chords. And the great part about doing chords on push is that instead of memorizing certain shapes in, I guess, a more linear sort of fashion on a piano, for example, if you remember a single shape on push, you can transpose that shape or move it across the um, interface of push and you will always get that same kind of chord. And that's because push has an isomorphic layout. So for example, if I play this shape and if I play it anywhere else on push, I will still get a minor scale. That's also a minor scale. That's also a minor scale. Um, and because of that, let's say I wanted to play some kind of major chord. It's this shape on push. I can bring the shape anywhere across push. That's also a major chord. That's also a major chord. That's also a major chord. For minor, it's a little bit different, right? And this is maybe where the theory part comes in. For minor chords, you have a third that's a flat third. So you're just bringing down the third by a half step. 
that's always going to be your minor chord shape. So now, anywhere across push, that's my minor chord. And this come, becomes a lot easier, especially when you're doing um, maybe chord extensions too. For example, now if I want to play a minor 7th, that's always going to be my minor 7th. If I want to play a minor ninth, that's always going to be my minor 7th and minor ninth up there. Um, so just something to be a little bit considerate of. A lot of people ask me, like, does push make playing things easier or like why should I get it especially if you don't have one and you're interested in getting one uh that's why you should get it <laughs> I think it's it tells me a lot of my, my composition and I really think of it as its own unique instrument really at this point so um let's let's get started I've talked a lot let's get some music going let's maybe create a, a kind of chord progression if we can um and I think we're in a minor now right so maybe we'll do like a simple one yeah let's do that okay cool so we got some stuff going. Let's loop this. <laughs> I did a little bit of like a flub at the end when I was stretching. So let's go ahead and edit that, take that away. Nice, cool. Let's quantize that a little also. Great. But there we go. We've got some kind of chord progression very quickly. And it is really a little bit to the melodic stuff like I mentioned. Because what I tend to do, I'm going to bring the volume of these two down so you can hear me a little more clearly. What I often do when I'm making different kinds of um, melodies and so on is that when I'm doing stuff involving push, um, I usually think of each melodic part as stemming from a harmonic part. So for example, you'll notice how I did the chords first instead of doing the bass line or instead of doing the melody first. And that's usually because I think of um, the chords as really being the foundation. And then I like to quote unquote extract the melody from the chords, which is something that you may have heard me speak about before. And if you've ever attended one of my workshops or been to one of my classes um, as well. And I'll get to a couple of um, questions a little bit in the chat in a moment. I just want to, oh no, I just noticed that my connection may or may not be unstable. Ah, oh no. <laughs> okay. Hopefully people can, can see this. Um, okay, cool. If something goes wrong, someone please yell in the chat. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how that would actually work. I usually get my students to be like, hey, something's wrong. Um, but yeah, so, so based off the chords that I created, let's also go ahead and just, let's play the chords back, but we'll stop the drums for a moment so that we can see the chords going. Great, so there are the chords. So basically my melody that I would extract will be based off any of the chords that I'm currently seeing over here. Um, and in this case, push makes it even easier too because I have the confidence of knowing that even if I press any of these notes that's highlighted at the moment um, in the A minor scale, they're all gonna just fall into the same key. So it isn't too much of a concern. Um, for what I'm trying trying to do. So it makes things a lot easier. Let's go ahead and duplicate this track at the moment. Or let's, no, let's create an entirely new MIDI track. So let's get our muscles going. Let's add a new track to this. Let's add a MIDI track as well. But this time I might add something from my collections. I think I had one of my favorite lead sounds. Let's start with some kind of melody now. One of my favorite lead sounds was in my collection over here. It's called a trying sign. Yeah, cool. It's pretty nice. I like it. <laughs> It's also pretty um, straightforward as far as like shaping the sound goes. And we've already got a couple macros here. I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that I've got this color in the right color. I usually think of leads as being like pink. So great, we got that. Great, um, and let's also make it a little bit softer. And let's also bring the chords back up a little bit to and the drums. Great, so we got that going. Now that I'm here with the notes that I have laid out in chromatic mode, um, I have the ability to choose specifically what I like to play. And I can kind of jam around a little bit too, so. Which is something I do pretty much all the time when I'm making music. Yeah.
And sometimes if I think of something that might be interesting, I'll make a note of that and I'll think about how I can start using it and creating some kind of motif out of that as well. So let's record something over here. into device mode, add a little bit more reverb to this. Cool. So very easily we have chords and melody now. <laughs> That's great. Yay. We're getting closer and closer to what we need to do. Maybe we'll add a little bit of bass after this. We'll see how that, how that goes. But I do know that I'm at the halfway point. It's 1.30 now. So I'm going to head back into the chat and see what's going on. Um, let's see. Okay, cool. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Wow. Okay, cool. A bunch of, let's see. Uh, oh no, my chat is frozen for a second. Okay, hopefully this is... Okay, la, 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 great. Cool, thank you. I think the last thing I saw was, yeah, uh, please enter the giveaway, everyone. Thank you, Thomas, for putting that into the um, the chat. So please enter, everyone. Yay, hello from Spain. Uh, uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. And let's see. Yeah, we have a software FX bundle from Arturia this week, everyone. So if you just tuned in also, welcome. Thank you all for being here. Uh, please join in and we welcome you. Um, let's see. <laughs> our push pads huge or our Claire's um, hands tiny? They are. Uh, push is actually quite big. Um, I don't have a know necessarily what um, controller you have, um, Samuel. But depending on uh, how, sh how should I compare? push these are bigger than the the normal like launch pad pads i don't know if you have a launch pad um but they are slightly smaller than the akai mpk mini pads so i like if you think of them on a scale there, there's that too but i do also have very small hands admittedly so that that's also something to be mindful of that's <laughs> when i when i used to play the piano i used to struggle a lot with brahms and ramanenoff if anyone plays brahms and ramanenoff you'll know what i mean <laughs> and chopin oh my gosh <laughs> but I used to, I used to do my best, which is fine. Um, ooh, Tetro, hello. Uh, what's up, Tetro? Hi, how's it going? Hope everything is good. Um, and yeah, you are most welcome. I'm glad that they are helpful. Glad to hear that they are helpful. For some reason, I'm not, a couple of people's names are like grayed out. Hmm. Maybe it might be something on my end. I do think it's something on my end. I'll see what's going on. Um, but yeah, you are most welcome. And it's Dal if you are using my artist name, it's Daltrick in all lowercase letters with the exclamation point. <laughs> uh, with, um, yeah, if you're using my artist name. Uh, yeah, cool. That's great. Uh, do, 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 do. Relative minor. Yeah, totally. You can absolutely learn guitar on push. Yeah, I, I, if, if I could do it, anyone else can do it too. Um, okay, a couple of questions. Is melodic and chord programming on, on push more simple than other kinds of launch pads stuff like Novation? It depends on which launch pad you have. I believe the launch pad pro, I haven't dug super into it. I think maybe our friend Tatro, if he's here, might be able to speak more to that. But I think on the launch pad pro, you can put it also similarly into the fourth mode. So you should be able to get something like that. Um, how a simple way to memorize the buttons on push? Um, practice, practice, practice. Uh, we, I often say this in like all of my streams and people, uh, it's, it's my default answer. Forgive me. It's my default answer when people ask like, how do you make things look so easy? That's it. it that's exactly it. It looks easy. It's not. <laughs> it's not actually easy. It's a lot of practice, lots of hours, lots of consistency. Also, I'm a big believer in consistency and practicing too. So there's a lot of that that goes on behind the scenes that you don't always see from a lot of um, artists or... Um, so yeah, lots of practicing. Um, and yeah, <laughs> Max, you do, yeah, you do have to think. Um, that's very kind of you, Max. I don't think I make it look easy, but I think I practice enough 
to get be okay at it, you know, just be able to navigate push. Um, and that kind of brings me also to something that I didn't mention about scale mode just now on push. So I, like I mentioned, mentioned scale mode lets you put yourself into a certain um, fixed number of notes corresponding to a certain scale. At the moment, I have it chromatically laid out. So I do have all of the other notes that might not be in a certain scale. You can also put push into something that's called in key mode. So now you'll notice that all of the um, empty spaces are not really um, showing up. And I know it's a little hard to see because of the way push is at the moment on the stream. So I do apologize for that. Um, but now I'm playing really upwards in threes. Um, and in this case, it's not super effective because I have my um, my other mode selected. Okay, cool. But now if I play in groups of threes on my electric piano sound, you can see that, yes, it's really just making my hands into a triangle shape. And that's how I'm getting a cross push and being able to navigate all of that. Um, so, so that's... That's a little bit of, of navigating push. I hope they answered that question. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, I need to scroll up <laughs> to the other stuff. Um, yeah, totally. It's. I mean, it, it will always be confusing at first. I think there's always a learning curve with everything, but it's a lot of the time I think it's like a mental barrier and it's we're, we're constantly trying to learn new things i'm actually learning a lot of new stuff at the moment i'm thanks to uh max and tatra i'm getting a lot more into the video production side of stuff so that's challenging my brain a little bit it's kind of similar to now that I, the more i think about it it's really similar to when i started getting to know different instruments too like push or guitar or any other thing it's really about that mental barrier and being able to break through with that and of course it's different across different mediums like music versus visual art versus photography versus other sorts of things pottery still i tried pottery once and, and i want to return to it i haven't uh, maybe i'll make like a, a clay push or something like that i don't know um but yeah it's, it's all kind of like a, a little bit in a similar vein there's that learning curve but once you break through with that things become a lot faster and a lot easier um how much is push uh now um it depends on where you live in the world and what um, currency you are in, I guess. Um, but definitely something that is worth considering is buying secondhand. This push that I'm using at the moment is my original push that was secondhand. I have, I have a different one that I use um, from the Ableton team, which I'm very thankful for, for. But otherwise, most of the gear that you see me have, everyone, like on, on that I use in my performances, most of it is secondhand. I rarely buy things firsthand. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's, it's a suggestion for people who are a little, maybe a little bit tight on money like myself. Um, Hank, yeah, I guess it depends, much too expensive. I, I do agree that starting out, it can be very expensive. So for, for students, for a lot of my students who use it, they have the benefit of getting the educational discount. And that's actually something that we have at 343 Labs too. So if you sign up, um, if you take lessons with 343, we do have discounts for live as well as for push. So that can help make push a lot more affordable too. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's definitely worth the money if you are able to, you know, utilize it. And if you use it every day, um, I think that's it though. I, I often to tell my students who are, and this, I guess maybe this applies less to the people in the chat because most folks have already had some experience with live, but I would never recommend getting like push and live at the same time. Usually I always recommend getting them separately, but to each their own. If you think that having a controller earlier on is going to help you with your production stuff, by all means. Um, I think that if you want, if you're still shopping around with different kinds of software and you're not sure even about which program you want to use, um, then it might not be the wisest thing to lock yourself in with both hardware and software. But if you've been using Live for a while and you enjoy the workflow and you think you could benefit from having some kind of external interface to speed up your process, uh, feel free to do that and you can think about getting push. Yeah, it's uh, something I would recommend. And uh, let's see... Uh, Jose, do you prefer push instead of a regular piano to generate new ideas? I use both. Um, I've mentioned this before, I think, in a previous stream, but I am a classically trained pianist. So sometimes if I am thinking about ideas, especially if it's from more of my writer side as opposed to my producer side, sometimes I just head over to my piano and I'm just like playing the idea down. 
um, and then move it into into my computer. But if I'm kind of like jamming out and maybe if I'm starting with a beat like I was in this case, um, then push is one of my go to's for, for most of the work that I do. So that's a really great question. I think it really depends on the the person. It's such a personal question, but that's how I, I work. I either use piano or I use this. If I'm thinking of lead synth, so that's sometimes a totally different thing. Sometimes I end up using my flute for that. Um, just like noodling around, thinking of different ideas melodically. And then I either record it into live or I just program it in based on stuff that I've thought of. Um, uh, Tatro and his... his <laughs> I don't know if Tatro's in his... Maybe he is at the moment. Um, that's funny. Oh, no, goodness. I have to... I keep finding that I have to like scroll upwards. Ah, ah, okay. I need to scroll up. Do, 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 do. Oh, Abe! Hi! Hi, hi, Abe. How's it going? Goodness. I'm <laughs> checking out all of these. Uh, Tanya, I love the tip about using force mode. Yeah, force mode is, is really great. I think it's, um, it's one of my favorites. And to ease my mind, I'm going to put this back into chromatic mode. Yeah, okay, that's much better for my soul. <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, and also thank you, Thomas, for sharing about that. We do have a new Discord channel. So if anyone wants to come over and hang out with us, please do. Um, I'm starting to get a little more on the, the Discord site too as well and uh we've got a link in the chat for that discord so if you want to join us in discord please join us over there in discord and you can hang out with us too um ooh, uh mike just finished my ableton beginners class with nathan is the intermediate class teaching push too so we actually used to teach push um in the beginner level class when we could all be together in person um i would say like for push honestly there could be a, a singular class on its own. So if you think, if you would like us to develop a push class because you want to learn push, let us know. And maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll, we'll do that if you, want it, if you want to learn push on its own. Um, so let's see what else we got. Oh, yes. Thank you, Tatra, for clarifying the, um, the launch pad situation as well. Um, and... Yeah, thank you, Max, also for doing the, the push in person stuff. But yeah, let us know if, if you think we should do like an online course on push or something. Maybe that's something that we can um, work out. Uh, why did you decide to learn guitar and bass? Because I could. Honestly, <laughs> because I could. I've always loved um, playing bass and guitar. And I played a little bit before, like dabbling, but a learning push helped me a lot with that because I started seeing a lot more commonalities with shapes and things clicked and I was able to play it a lot better. So you can check out some of my pushing guitar videos on my YouTube channel. There's there's content and videos of me doing that. But I picked them up like pretty much not super long after I started doing push stuff because I just realized like how similar they were. So I just jumped into it and just started doing it because I could. Um, and let's see, call it, is there a way to control send and uh, receive that's on the drummer? I push not the master send receive for the one on the drum rack ah okay cool i think i understand what you're talking about so what you're talking about actually involves sends and returns so i'm not sure if that's what you exactly mean by receives but sends and returns in a chain are controllable from the live interface but you know what let's go ahead and check that out i may be wrong maybe there's some kind of extra update that came with um i don't know live 11 because this is what i'm using i am using live 11 so let's check this out let's head into device view Let's see if we can find um, some controls about what we might be able to do with this. And let's see what we can do. If I jump in here, huh, okay. Yeah, unfortunately it looks like at the moment there still isn't a way to access sends and returns or really chains. That's kind of what we want. We want the, the chain list to show up over here on push. Unfortunately, it looks like we don't have the option to do that at the moment, but maybe live 12. Or maybe, maybe, maybe one of the other uh, live versions. You can access some parts, like the choke groups and stuff like that, but you, you aren't able to access the sends and returns within a specific chain in a drum rack itself. So unfortunately, that's not something we can do yet, but maybe soon. Um, and let's see. A uh, little... Uh, uh, is Push just compatible with DAW Ableton? Ooh, Ableton is the company. Live is the software. <laughs> you know, I'm probably annoying everyone at this point, but that's just, it's the truth. You you got to know your your terminology. Um, so Ableton Push is made by the company Ableton. It's compatible with Live, which we know because I'm currently using it with Live. I have also used it as a generic MIDI controller 
for um, for logic. And I have also used it with a script from Bitwig, if that's interesting to, to anyone. So depending on how much you want to milk out of push, you can have the option of using it with other DAWs too. But definitely, it, I would say it integrates the best with live. So that's something that you will need to consider when you're purchasing push or if you're thinking about investing in push. And uh, let's see. Okay, cool. I think that's it. Yay. Thanks everyone for your questions. Great. So we, we came over here. We had our bass. We had our uh, melody. I Well, I guess someone didn't like my melody. They thumbs down the video. Sorry to the person who didn't like my melody or didn't like my didn't like my chords. Oh, poor thing. Um, well, let's keep going. Let's go ahead and come over here into the live interface Oh, excuse me, the live interface for a second. What I want to do is make a copy of my electric track that had my chords on it. And I want to extract some kind of bass line. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this track. Let's do this one from um, live. It might be a little faster to do this from live. So I've got electric over here. I'm going to go ahead into my, my track over here. That is the second electric track. And let's rename it bass for now. Let's also recolor it. I think I'd like to put some kind of bass line on it. And the way that I like to extract, quote unquote, <laughs> bass lines from a lot of my chords is I just solo the um, track and I take away every note that is not the lowest note in my chord progression. So as you can see right here, I'm taking away all of these notes. I'm removing them. And I'm also gonna drop them down into a lower octave. So let's make them around D1 to A1. Let's also maybe put some kind of different sound on these. So let's go ahead and check out my bass over here. I think I like to maybe get some kind of, ooh, that's interesting. Um, let's find a preset that we might be able to, okay, cool, bass housey. Um, I want something that I might be able to manipulate a little bit of the timbre of just to make things a bit more interesting, but let's take a listen to how this sounds soloed first. Okay, cool. So it's still a little bit high. Let's bring it down. That's good, okay, cool. Uh, we'll adjust the mix from push and we'll also unsolo. Ooh, yes, I forgot about that. Okay, cool. Let's actually bring that up a bit. I think that would be good. Nice. So now we got all the parts going. That's a very quick way, very, very quick way to get a bass line. You take your chords, you remove all of the notes that are not the root of the chord, and then you'll be able to add that in. And if I go into a lower octave, I can also see that my bass notes are here. That's the third one. That's going to be the fourth one. So that's another way that you can start thinking about melodic stuff too. As far as transposition goes on push, pretty easy to do as well. Um, I did transpose the notes over in live itself, but there's a really useful device actually that can be really handy with transposing melodies, transposing different kinds of chords, stuff like that. Um, and it's called the pitch device. So let's head over here. Um, let's add a device. It's a MIDI effect. So it's a, a MIDI effect that we'll put in front of the instrument. Let's go ahead and look at pitch over here. Um, here it is. What pitch lets us do is it lets us control how many semitones or tones we are either lowering or bringing up a certain clip by. So I'm gonna go ahead and solo my bass again so that we just hear it. But to demonstrate, let's bring the pitch up by, um, let's do, yeah, 12 semitones. 12 semitones are what we have in an octave. So we have 12 notes uh, between one note and another note that are the same note. So let's say I'm playing my A minor scale, which we're currently in at the moment. If I'm playing my A minor scale starting at the bottom and I play all of the notes in an A minor scale up until the top, that's one octave um, uh, uh, until I get the next series of the scale again. So that's one octave. That's another octave above of that. So now by instantiating this pitch device, my entire bass line is bumped up by one octave. So it's the same note names, but just a little bit higher. So here we go. So, so it's sounding less like a bass line now. <laughs> it's more of like a, a, a line, <laughs> just a line. Um, and I can use this to maybe bring this up 
any number of semitones that I want. Here is, here is 24, which is two octaves up. And you can hear that as well. But let's reset that down. Um, what I did is I held down the delete button on push and I tapped on that parameter to reset it and put it back into its original mode. Um, so that's something that you can also do with pretty much any parameter on push that you've changed. Let's say I've changed the master volume. If I want to reset that, let's let's go in and change it. So if I bring it down, now my voice my voice is also going to be softer because my, my voice is coming through live as well. If I bring this down, if I hold down delete and I touch the master volume, that's going to reset that. So any control that you want to reset, you can always hold down delete, tap that button, and it's going to get you there. Great, so I got this here now. Um, and probably one thing that I should have mentioned while I was doing all of these things and programming them in is that absolutely from push, you are able to change the octave that you're playing in. So for example, on my sign uh, track over here, I started playing in this like higher octave when I was recording stuff. What if I wanted this to be in an octave that's even higher? I could have used the octave button to navigate higher. So now I'm in an even higher octave. I'm playing all of these notes in the same um, pad on the same pads, but because of my octave buttons, they, they are transposing up or down by an octave. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set this back to the default. Usually when you open up something, it starts in the, the one octave and then you'll be able to navigate accordingly. So great. Now we're back to normal um, and we can kind of navigate this however we want to. One thing I will also do is start renaming my tracks. I did that for the bass, but I usually like to try being as organized as I can. And you'll notice that I also have a, a different color for my uh, drums than I usually have. If you tune into my other streams before, I usually do orange. So uh, we got orange or red. red. Red's also good. Um, and then great. Everything else looks good. Let's rename this keys and let's rename that last track uh, lead. And then I'm also going to, just for organization's sake, color all of my tracks, all of my clips, excuse me, by their track color. So I'm going to select the first track, um, hold down shift and click on my last track. And then I'll right click and say, assign track color to clips. And now all of my clips are nicely color coded. Um, and this is something that you don't have to do. It's definitely not an obligation, but I love doing it just because it helps me keep organized, especially when I'm using push for any kind of performance stuff or programming or layering. Being able to visually see the different colors has helped me a lot with my navigation and the way that I think about, you know, working with different kinds of clips, especially when things need to happen in real time. So for example, like if I know that I want to um, make copies of all of these clips and put them below, I know exactly what I'm doing. Like I want to copy my bass clips. So I'll hold down duplicate and touch and tap on push so that I can copy from one pad to another with the duplicate button. Um, and maybe I want to copy all three of these into my last scene over there. So you can do that. And you can move very quickly on push uh, when you have things organized and when you know exactly what a certain function of push will do in your live set. So I find that pretty useful. Uh, hopefully you do too. <laughs> uh, let's head over into the chat. I know I only have a couple more minutes, but thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, really appreciate it. And let's see. Uh, okay, I need to, to scroll a little as well. Um, Could push create unique chords than piano? We had another question. I think it really depends on how you use it. Um, If you use it in in-key mode, you might pretty much get the same types of chords that you would as on a piano. For example, like the major chords, major sevenths, dominant sevenths. Um, you know, all of these different kinds of, of chords, different inversions of the chords as well. Um, so it really depends on, on how you choose to use push, I think, because it's personally speaking as a pianist, I feel like I could get the same colors and varieties and pl a plethora of chords as I would, um, on a piano. So it really is up to the person. Some of these questions are quite, um, personal and dependent on the type of person. So, uh, yeah, also, oh, sorry, I, I missed a couple of questions up, so I'm going to scroll up a little bit um yeah samuel my merch i i am working on my merch i showed my merch to some some folks previously my ableton is the company and live is, is the software t-shirt um but yeah, when you first got push how uh did you learn from your college or a manual uh book or practicing a lot of it was just practicing to be very honest um 
uh, but it was a combination of everything, I think. I didn't really learn in college through an actual school, but I just taught myself. And I've mentioned to this previously, uh, to you previously also, Rio, because you seem to be asking the same questions every week. <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's very kind of you to ask, like, how good we get at certain things, but it's really just practice. Um, and it's like, you, you can always ask something and I'll always be able to give you an answer, but if it ends up being the same answer, it's a little bit strange. So yeah, a lot of practicing. Um, and let's see. Oh, thank you. The chords sound good. Um, I, I'm glad that they sound okay. <laughs> I think they sounded all right. Um, we had a couple of, of nice like tensions in there, a, a couple of sevenths. So maybe that made things a bit more interesting. But uh, yeah, that's essentially kind of like the 101 on how you would get started with push. If anyone has final questions, feel free to leave them in the chat. I'm just going to talk a little bit very quickly about um, creative things that might be interesting for push. So Remember how just now when I talked about using scale mode, um, you can put things in, in key. So something that, that I found pretty interesting to get more creative with different kinds of chord shapes and scales is to use in key mode instead of chromatic. I think I often think about chromatic mode maybe a little bit more similarly to the piano and guitar kind of structure because you get access to all the notes. It's just finding like a certain shape of a certain chord and you know figuring out how to manipulate it there from, for there, from there moving forward. But if I want to start getting interesting, um, I might put a um, I might put push into in key mode and then randomly set the scale. So for example, now I'm just closing my eyes. I'm gonna press any of the soft buttons. Uh, what key are we in now? Okay, our root is E flat, and let's pick some kind of scale that we're using. So I'm just like moving the knobs. Let's see what we get. Uh, we've got E flat Messian seven, which is <laughs> I don't know how this will sound like. So that's a different kind of skill too. I think it's it's based on Messian, the, the composer. Um, but yeah, you can start getting creative. And because you're laid out in key, you don't have the benefit of looking at all those chromatic notes. So if you want to get start, if you want to start getting, you know, a little bit more interesting with like colors, tones, um, that might be something to consider. So that's one way that I get a little bit more creative with types of chords that are a little bit more different from the traditional sorts of chords that you might associate with making music. Um, but then again, if you do want to keep things simple and keep things easy um, and a bit more straightforward, you always have the benefit of falling back on the more traditional types of scales, like the major scale or the minor scale. Um, and even you know, things like Dorian and Mixolydian, those are still pretty um, straightforward as far as modes go. So that's something that you can consider also. So for example, Dorian, which I often think of as like the half major, half minor scale. And same thing for Mixo also. It's a little bit of a mix, <laughs> a mix of those, because Mixolydian, uh, we're very punny today. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you everyone for, for tuning in. I'll just take a look at some of the last questions and then we'll do a short little wrap up. But uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Yeah, absolutely. The manual works really great too. And just being able to, to figure things out on your own. There's a saying that a lot of folks throw around um, professionally and maybe not even professionally too, but even educationally called RTFM, <laughs> which is uh, read the insert word there manual. I, I, I usually say friendly manual because the Ableton reference manual is very friendly. It covers both live and push. So that's why it's the Ableton reference menu, manual because it's from the company. Um, but yeah, it covers both things in live and things on push. And the push section there is really wonderful. There's lots of really great diagrams that you can use to navigate the interface of push. So would highly recommend that if you already have push or if you're interested in getting to know push. Another really great resource is the learn push section on the Ableton website. So you can head over to ableton.com and you'll be able to find lots of great resources there. And of course, another good resource is my YouTube channel and the 343 Labs YouTube channel too. So you can of course subscribe to us and follow us if you like more content, um, being able to figure out more push stuff or more live stuff, especially, especially, excuse me, especially for the shows that I host on Monday over here on the YouTube channel. But all in all, thank you for tuning in. Tomorrow, we will have Tetro Talks with our very dear creative director, Tetro. And we will see all of you tomorrow. So thank you again for tuning in, everyone. Don't forget to enter the giveaway and have a great week ahead. Bye.
second infraction. Blood through my veins runs deep in reaction. Inside this fire blazes through the pouring rain. Ignite this time, burning skies won't be in vain. From the ash, my heart will rise. Heart will rise. From the truth, my soul can hide. Soul can hide. It lives in my chemistry. Through the 
the pouring rain. 